So some of you will have seen our most recent uh, dive shot video, uh, the one where Nora gets knocked off her face. Um, this dive featured a dive that we had planned as a decompression dive, which means the dive was going to go beyond recreational dive limits and we were going to factor in some decompression stops into our plan. This type of diving is about pushing the envelope a little bit further and it does mean that you've got to be a little bit more diligent uh, because you're going to get to see the marine world that you ordinarily wouldn't see or wouldn't see for as long um, as we might be able to stay down on the troll for half an hour rather than five minutes. But at this depth, it is more involved, you do need to be more diligent, and it requires a lot more planning. I'm Gary from Deeper Diving, and today we're going to be working with our pal Lyle Hogg as we talk a little bit about decompression dive planning. Lyle is an instructor from North Iowa Scuba and a presenter on Everything Scuba uh, YouTube channel. Um, we'll put a link down below in the description uh, to his YouTube channel and you can check it out for Everything Scuba. Lyle is also a recent convert to closed circuit rebreather diving and did his first decompression dive on CCR recently too. We got talking prior to him doing his CCR dive um, and we started to talk about the considerations for decompression diving and what happens at that moment that your computer's NDL goes past zero. Here's Lyle to talk about that dive. As part of the certification process that I underwent with instructor Nevin on the AP Inspiration Rebreather, we did some air diluent decompression dives. You allow the NDL to run out. In this episode, I'm gonna show you a dive that we did in Cane Bay down the wall to about 130 feet. We spent 25 to 30 minutes at 130 feet, which is well past the no decompression limit for a recreational diver. A quick disclaimer though, do not attempt this by yourself if you do not have the appropriate training. First step is to build the rebreather and test it to make sure it's safe before we take it underwater. Bubble checks are completed at a shallow depth. We begin our descent down the Cane Bay wall. It's a long way down. Checking my handset, I can see we're at 86 feet and I have a no stop time which is the same as no decompression limit of 25 minutes. Now at 90 feet, and I'm down to two minutes of no stop time. about to go somewhere I've never gone before. One minute left. And the descent only gets steeper. But man, is it beautiful down here. So quiet, so serene. One more check of my handset, and what the heck? What is TTS? The surface looks so far away. How did I get into this? And how do I get out of it? Well, let's talk to another YouTube channel. Gary with Defer Diving, an experienced rebreather diver and instructor. So a couple of important things to pull out from this video. Firstly, Lyle was under instruction at all times uh, during his CCR experience and was pulling this video together as part of his training and development course. Um, also, this didn't happen by accident. This was a planned event. Uh, Lyle had a plan to get back to the surface and he executed that plan perfectly. 
So I wanted to talk a little bit today about some of the planning considerations you need to think about when you're looking at diving beyond recreational limits. But before we go any further, this is not a training course. Decompression diving is not something you, you complete without doing the necessary training. Why is that? Because you don't know what you don't know. I think Rumsfeld kind of coined it very, very well by calling them unknown unknowns. I love that phrase. So let's talk a little bit about dive planning. We all remember learning dive planning when we did our open water course, using a table, using a wheel, using a calculator thingy to work out our pressure groups and our surface intervals. And I'm sure we then used it religiously every time we planned a dive after that to calculate how much surface interval and what pressure group we were in and what was the maximum depth of the next dive we can do. Yeah? No? No. I'm sure I'm not the only one who didn't really understand the concepts of, of decompression models and pressure groups and dive planning when I did my open water course. And so I bought a dive computer and job's fixed, done, isn't it? Yeah, all the planning considerations I need. So if you're that type of diver, then this video probably isn't or wasn't for you. But let's put things a little bit into perspective. If we took all the known theory about decompression and put it into one book, it'd be a pretty big book. Kind of a Lord of the Rings big book. And if we took all of the dive theory that is part of your open water course, it would be the forward on the inside cover of the front of the book. And it can be summarized as this. There is a limit that you can dive before you can come straight back to the surface. Don't exceed that limit. End of. That's it. And for most divers, that's absolutely fine. But what if you're not most divers? What if you want to go a bit deeper? What if you want to go a bit longer? Hey, I still got gas. Well, the physics and physiology associated with diving is a little bit more complicated than that. And the, I got me some more gas, isn't gonna cut it. If you extend your dive beyond your decompression limit and fail to fulfill your decompression obligations, you can significantly increase your risk of injury and death. In other words, a decompression dive should always be a planned event. This means we need a plan. No, we're not gonna use a recreational dive planner as that's not gonna cut the mustard. Um, but we have some other tools that we can use. Personally, I use something called vPlanner, where I can input all the planned parameters of the dive and it'll provide me with a recommended dive profile, including all of the stage and decompression stops. But before we even start with tools, there are a few things we need to think about first. Firstly, how deep are we gonna go? With this information, we can determine what gas we're gonna breathe. On a rebreather, we're typically diving nitrox. I mean, a rebreather is effectively just a portable gas blending machine that we take diving with us. But depending on the depths we're going to, we might also want to reduce the narcotic effect of the gases that we're breathing, and we might want to switch to a Trimix diluent instead of an air. So how deep we're going is an important consideration. How long do we want to be at the bottom is our next consideration. Why? Two reasons. The length of time at the bottom will significantly determine the amount of time you'll need to spend in decompressing in shallow water. The longer you're down deeper, the longer your decompression stops are going to be. So the second thing we need to think about is how much gas we're going to consume when we're on the dive, and therefore how much gas do we need to take with us. On a rebreather, which is largely a lossless system, it becomes less of a factor, but still a factor we need to take in to our planning. And in the case that something goes wrong, we need to plan a contingency. We need to make sure we've got enough gas supply with us to be able to handle a bailout to get us to the surface and still do our decompression obligations too. Now you'll notice on Lyle's handset where he exceeded his NDL, his no decompression limit, his handset changed to display something called TTS, which stands for time to surface. Time to surface is your computer's way of showing you how long you should take at that current depth before you get back to the surface. As you ascend, your TTS will clock up more slowly before starting to reduce as you start to fulfill your decompression obligation. You can then track this reduction in your TTS against your original dive plan and make sure that you're completing and fulfilling all of your planned and actual decompression obligations. Now the beauty of a rebreather system is that you are able to increase the oxygen content of the loop that you're breathing to nearly 
um, which means that you're able to accelerate the way your body off gases the nitrogen, which means you can significantly increase the speed of your decompression stops. But this is all part of the dive plan. So this plan, we've planned the depth. We've planned the time we intend spending at the bottom. We've planned which gas we're going to dive on, uh, whether it be an air diluent or a trimix diluent. We've planned our stage stops and our decompression stops and the length of time and the depth that each one of those is going to be at. We've also planned for any gas switches we're going to do and when we're going to do them to maximize uh, the benefits of the gas and to minimize our decompression times. We've even planned a contingency and what to do if things go wrong and what gases we're going to take with us to ensure that we can still get to the surface safely. And that's a lot of stuff that we've planned. That's a lot of stuff to remember. And with the narcotic effect of the gases that we're breathing it, remember, we will not. So we write it down, all of it, either on a slate, a wrist slate perhaps, or a, a, a normal slate, or on wet notes. We will write it down and we will refer to this plan a lot whilst we're diving. And this is where the old phrase in, in decompression diving and technical diving comes from. Plan the dive, dive the plan. By doing that, we'll come back safely. So if we plan the dive properly and we execute the plan as intended, we'll all safely come back from what's undoubtedly one of the most exhilarating dive experiences beyond recreational limits you're likely to have. They are fab dives. As Lyle and I have both said, this is not a training video and this is not a video aimed at replacing or mitigating your need to be trained. If you contemplate diving beyond recreational dive limits, beyond the limits to which you've been trained, I'll advise you to hook up with an instructor that you can rely on and you can trust and get the additional training that you will need. So all that's left to say is dive safe, dive long, dive plenty. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Also subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to get uh, notifications when we post something new, ring the bell icon. Bye.